Hey guys, so today I quickly want to go ahead and do my video here, my Apple iPhone 5 on the right side here uh, versus my Nexus 4, my, some people prefer to call it the Google Nexus 4 and some people say LG Nexus 4, some people say Nexus 4, so uh, this is going to be a quick look here, uh, we're going to go ahead and compare them a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and start off by checking out the form factor, then some specs, and then we're going to go ahead and do some quick speed testing. And then we're going to go ahead and check out some cool apps. So I'm just going to go ahead and close everything else in the background right now. So if we go ahead and start looking at the form factor, so if you go ahead and turn off the displays, you can see I have the black variants of both. You can see that Nexus 4 doesn't have any uh, rear hardware button down here it only has virtual keys uh, when you just, just turn the display on uh, so that's you know gets a little bit more of a clean look here on the front side if you go ahead and take a look here at the uh, bottom of the two devices you can see that on both devices you get that kind of you know charging port there and both of course this one uses USB and I'm pretty good this one's using like it's like a lightning connector or something and I always say that wrong. Then, of course, on the iPhone 5, you can also see that you have the microphone there and also the speaker. And also, uh, you get the headphone jack down at the bottom of the device, something that I do prefer more than on the top because it's easier when you have the device and listen to music and have it in your pocket, uh, at least for me. Uh, on the, the Nexus 4, you have this at the top and uh, you don't have any, you know, then, of course, you have the power on button here also. Uh, on the um, the little iPhone there uh, to power the device on. On the right side, we don't have anything on the iPhone except the you know that we have the nano SIM card. Um, but on the Nexus 4, we do have the power on button there. And then on the left side, on both, we have volume up and down, volume up and down keys. And then we also have the mute switch on the iPhone 5. If you go ahead now and take a quick look here at the back of the devices, we can see the Nexus text here because it's a Nexus smartphone. Uh, also the LG there. Uh, we have full glass back here on the uh, Nexus uh, phone. And we have the camera here on the left side and we also have the camera here on the left side on the iPhone 5. On the iPhone 5 it's a little bit different compared to earlier iPhones. We don't have the full glass back. And something that I definitely do prefer because when you use the device and zoom in and stuff like that, it doesn't move around like it did with the full glass back as on the uh, iPhone 4 and on the iPhone 4S. So I do prefer that Apple finally switch this. And then they have a glass, a little bit glass down here. And then at the top, I'm not sure if I like that kind of design. And then also at the camera, they should have some kind of protecting thing over the lens. So if you accidentally you know drop the device it should be kind of hard to scratch that thing so that's very good uh, so quick little look here so i really hate this full glass back that we have on the iphone 4 iphone 4s and now on the nexus 4 because as you can see when i'm using like as you can see it moves around very very easily compared to the iphone and i don't i don't i don't like that you know i i don't like that so a quick look over there at those little things now let's go ahead and turn the display on and let's go ahead and check out some specs and a quick little specs look here. So the first thing here, the iPhone comes in a 4G variant if you live in the US. So that's like pretty sweet, like faster speeds. Then the Nexus 4 that doesn't have that. Uh, but the big, of course, selling point with this little Nexus for here is the pricing of course that you know it will be way 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 cheaper than a um, than an iPhone. If you go ahead and now continue you, on the iPhone 5 you get a nano sim card here on the side uh, which is the new smallest technology of uh, sim cards and I don't want to take out the sim right now I don't even think I have one sim card in right now uh, while well, you get a little pretty sure bigger variant here micro sim card or it could be the same uh, on this one of course I don't use sim cards in my you know just review units but you have this little sim card tray here on the side of the device over here 
So if you go ahead now continue, of course, something else that you probably do notice here is that the uh, the iPhone 5 is a little smaller, the Nexus 4 is wider and longer smartphone, while the iPhone 5 is a little bit thinner uh, and a little bit lighter in, you know, of course it's way, way, way thinner here. You can definitely see that. What the F? So that's, um, you know, bigger phone, uh, you know, kind of depends on you know if you like the big things or if you do prefer you know the smaller things it all depends now I'm just gonna go ahead and see here if I have screen brightness turned on both to full there we go so something that I do can like mention here about the the kind of like brightness of the displays it seems like the the Apple iPhone 5 is uh, kind of like brighter Something that I definitely do prefer, and something you know, huge kudos here to Apple for making a you know bright smartphone that's you know brighter than the one that I'm using right now, uh, the Nexus 4, of course. Uh, if you go ahead now, continue on to the display technologies. Of course, we have a four-inch device over here on the right side, while the Nexus 4 is uh, bigger. Uh, it's a 4.7-inch smartphone. Uh, so of course, you know, I, I prefer bigger smartphones. I have my Galaxy Note 2, which has a very, very big, you know, display, 5.5 inch. But some people prefer the smaller one. Yeah, but uh, I think both are very, very easy to maneuver because they have both like kind of like good form factors in the hand. Uh, but if you go ahead now and talk about, you know, kind of like the screen technology that you get on both these two devices. Uh, oh my God. So I had to make like a pause in the video because I got pissed off at that message. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and continue. So where were we? Screen technology, yeah. So you get a, on the iPhone 5, you get uh, the resolution 640 times 1136. Uh, it's a LED backlit TFT display basically. Uh, while on the Nexus 4 you get the true HD IPS display, so a little bit different screen technologies it seems like and also you can see definitely on the fonts that they are way smaller on the Nexus 4, something that I definitely do like more and uh, that you know it looks more cool with like a smaller font at least for me uh, but you know of course this is also like a cool little font over there uh, so you get 768 times 1280 resolution here on the Nexus 4, you probably get a little bit higher you know, usually phones are 720 times 11, 720 times 1280 resolution, uh, but I think that you get uh, 768 instead of 720 on the Nexus 4 just because you have this these kinds of virtual keys down here at the bottom. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that that is the reason why. Uh, so the PPI pixels per inch is still higher though on the iPhone 5's five, five, uh, four inch display, 326 pixels per inch. Uh, versus 318 ppi but I mean like it's around 10 more pixels per inch on the iPhone 5 but you know it's, it's amazing on both uh, but I still do think the big thing there is not the ppi but that is that especially on in iOS and on iPhones the font is extremely extremely big and while yes that is kind of cool uh, it's also very very nice with this little bit like a smaller font I kind of like kind of like that a little bit more looks a little bit more clean looking at least if you go ahead and ask me myself so uh, which screen is better we are going to go ahead and take a look at this uh, more and more uh, when we're going to go ahead and do some testing and stuff like that uh, but from my personal perspective here when i have these two screens over here uh, something that apple did and something that apple noticed with their iphones was that they needed to have more vibrant colors, just as Samsung has in their Super AMOLED uh, displays. So with the new iPhone 5, you get way more vi vibrant colors, like green is more green, blue is more blue, uh, and uh, you know that basically works like that with every single color. Um, uh, so it kind of works a little bit like a Super AMOLED display there, like that it, it's a lot more. Uh, you know, vibrant and more, you know, better color saturation than previous iPhones. Uh, while on the True HD IPS display, um, I, I like to call it that this uh, display here on the iPhone and on the, like uh, the AMOLED displays from Samsung, they have like, this kind of like cool color uh, feeling, but they uh, could, uh, you know, ha have a little bit like a, of a cartoon feeling, but still everyone of course like a lot of colors like this. But if you want to have a little bit like a bit, you know, a little bit lighter colors, a little bit more maybe like real colors, 
and I, I think the true HD IPS display really, really is amazing. Uh, you know, it doesn't they doesn't uh, have extremely low colors. It's more like lighter colors compared to the iPhone 5 and the Super AMOLED displays. And I like both screen technologies a ton. Uh, so, I mean, like, it all depends, but both, of course, is amazing displays, but we can go ahead and take a look here, if we can go ahead and see, uh, that we have, um, as you see, green here, green is a little bit more light green over there, uh, while green is a little bit more, you know, hardcore green over here, uh, red is, yeah, you know, red, red, of course, is a little bit red, but a little bit more red over here, uh, so, oh my god, I love both these two displays, I love them both, I love them both a ton, they're both so amazing. Uh, which one's better though, I mean like, I, I myself, I'm a big font fan here, that the font is a little bit smaller, and I really like this kind of cool feeling with lighter colors um, on the, uh, the 3 HD IPS display, so I'm pretty sure that would be the winner for me, uh, uh, over the iPhone over here. So, if we go ahead and continue now, both of Gura Glass on top, it should be Gura Glass 2 protection on both these two devices. So of course, that's very, very nice with, you know, good protection. If we talk about storage, here, of course, is where the iPhone kills the Nexus 4, because Nexus 4 only comes in 18, 16 gigabyte variants and doesn't have a removable back. So you can't even insert an SD card in this device, so either you, get, you buy the 18 or you buy the 16 gigabyte variant, then you can't upgrade. It kind of works the same though with iPhones, but they have more storage uh, variants. They have a 32 and a 64 gigabyte variants along the 16 gigabyte variant. Uh, also, in, in terms of memory here, when you're multitasking and stuff like that, you may want to, you know, like the the Nexus because it has one more gigabyte of RAM. There's two gigabytes of RAM while the iPhone has one gigabyte of RAM. Now, personally, I haven't really felt, you know, uh, this kind of RAM thing. I'm really not sure if I feel the difference between one gigabyte and two gigabytes. Maybe if you're a hardcore multitasker and use a lot of heavy apps, you might feel a difference. If you go ahead and continue now, you have an 8 mp camera here on the Nexus 4 and then you also get an 8 mp camera on the iPhone and then also front facing camera on both, a 1.2 mp one here on the Nexus 4 while you get the 1.3 one uh, on the, uh, oh wait a sec, 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 wait a sec. yeah, 1.3 mp one uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry people, uh, 1.3 mp one on the Nexus 4 while it is a 1.2 one <laughs> on the iPhone. Uh, yeah, so if we now go ahead and continue down the line uh, about operating system, of course you get iOS, you know, Apple's own OS here uh, that they haven't really changed that much uh, the last um, the last like five years. It's kind of been the same, so a little bit boring. While of course uh, with Android, you get the, the latest Android here all all, all the time, of course, uh, because uh, you know Apple. This is a Nexus device, so it runs Android 4.2.1 Jelly Boy Bean. Uh, so you know you have Widget, you have Product Butter, which is more smooth than iOS 6, and you, you know you can have custom launchers, and you know it's just crazy how much customization you have and opportunities you get with Android. And also that, you know, you always get the latest version here, but of course that's kind of how it works with all of the iOS new smartphones nowadays. But Android 4.2.1 uh, has Google Now, has a ton of cool things here. Of course you get Siri here, yeah, but Siri ain't new, boy, and it's not integrated up good with Google. Uh, <laughs> So Apple's A6, now we've talked about chipset, Apple A6 chipset, Apple's own chipset in this little boy. Um, while you get this dual core uh, 1 gigahertz processor as well. Uh, while you get the, uh, the APQ8064 from Qualcomm Snapdragon 1 here on the Nexus 4. Uh, and both perform very very good here, but of course, you know, if you talk about processor, you get a dual core one over here. Uh, and then we get the quad core one, uh, a 1.5 gigahertz uh, crate processor on the Nexus 4. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and also take a look at some game experience, actually uh, see how these two guys performs. Uh, but also the GPU side, it's a triple core GPU here on the iPhone, which is extremely good. And then we have a very good GPU also on the Nexus 4, we have the Adreno 321, which has amazing support from like game law from the games that I've tried. Uh, if you look at the battery now, here really the Nexus 4 kind of kills uh, the Apple's iOS. Uh, Apple's uh, uh, iPhone only have a, a 1,414 milliamps, 
where you get 2,100 milliamps users in the Galaxy S3 on the Nexus 4. So that's a pr probably, you know, you get better battery life here in the Nexus smartphone and that quad core should be better, you know, battery efficient than dual core. Uh, so if we go ahead now and continue on the line and try out some apps right now. I'm just going to go ahead and fire up um, the browser on both these two devices. And uh, we are just going to go ahead and go to a website right now. And when we have these over here, you can see the keyboard font is a little bit bigger when you put up the keyboard over here. We have the Google Chrome browser and uh, the Apple's own Safari browser. Uh, so if you just go ahead and fire up Pocket now, see which one loads up first. So Apple uh, with their iPhone 5 is kind of quicker here. Uh, one thing I can see is why it looks kind of good on both these two devices. Why it looks extremely good on both these two devices. Uh, but uh, hmm, which one looks better? Uh, which one looks better here in terms of the browser? Let's go ahead and zoom in. And one thing of the problem here with the Nexus 4 that I've been saying in my white sex video about the Nexus 4 is as you see here on the iPhone, it reacts immediately when I'm when I'm trying to zoom in here. It like instant, uh, you know, and it's very, very easy to zoom in all the way uh, without going outside of the screen. On the Nexus 4, it takes a little bit longer here before it reacts that I'm trying to zoom in. Something that extre is extremely bad and it's extremely, extremely annoying while well, it's way better to zoom in and out here on the iPhone uh, and also that it, it was loading quicker here. One of the problems here also though with the iPhone is that when you scroll up and down it takes a long time, you need to do a lot of swiping here uh, while on the Nexus 4 you can, you, you know, you have one quick swipe and then you are at the bottom of the page. So definitely, I said now, one advantage here with the Nexus 4 and one, you know, disadvantage here. Uh, so I'd said advantages on both sides and disadvantages, of course. Uh, uh, if you go ahead and also, I think the screen is a little bit brighter in display, but um, uh, I did notice it more when you had a lot more colors when we were uh, when we were, uh, you know, we we were out when we didn't have any app open up. When we have a lot of colors, because this, you know, display shows colors more vibrant. Uh, but here, when we have a lot of white, they kind of look the same in kind of like screen brightness. Maybe the iPhone is a little bit better uh, at that little thing. Of course, both are very very smooth when you go in and out. So if we go ahead and load this. One more time, the GPU seems to be better. There we go, finished on the iPhone. So in, t in, in terms of speed here, of course it's way better here on the iPhone and the Safari browser. Google Chrome is still loading, wow. Let's go ahead and try out a very, very heavy website, but uh, with a lot of nice graphics. Let's go ahead and fire up the Verge. There we go. It seems like when you have loaded the page already once, it loads up very, very quick uh, on, uh, or I mean like on the Nexus device because that's a Google Chrome browser. It probably saves it in the cache or something. Uh, one, again, here we can see the displays. The, you know, display technology is very much, you know, they're very, very similar in, you know, in terms of the screen, but that it is a little bit brighter here on the iPhone. I definitely can see something, uh, can see that a little bit. And then I also could see here in terms of colors that uh, it's a little bit more vibrant here on the Apple iPhone. Uh, but of course, text is very, very, very clear on both these two devices. There we go. And you can see speed testing is way, way better here on the iPhone. It really, really kills the Nexus 4 in terms of that. So quick little look there in the browser. Let's go ahead now and continue down the line. And let's go ahead and try out some loading of some videos online. So we're just gonna go ahead and go here to YouTube. Here we go. A lot quicker here uh, on the iPhone. Just gonna go ahead and search for one of my videos. There we 
go. Let's go ahead and fire up this video. Okay, it seems like it's loaded up quicker here on the iPhone. Let's go ahead and check this out. Once again, we can see the screen. White looks actually a little bit better here on the iPhone when I look at this video uh, than on the, the True HD IPS display when we look at videos. Still very very similar displays though, you know, it's like... But white was a little bit better, I saw there in the annotation. Let's go ahead and go back again. As you can see, I, I smashed some stuff. Let's go ahead and tap on another video. Again, it's loading up quicker here. And it looks a lot warmer, color looks a lot warmer here on the iPhone uh, than on the Nexus one. Wow. Looks way better. Way better, personally. And white looks a lot better there, definitely again in the annotation area, if you ask me, on the iPhone. So personally, I, I you know I prefer it in video mode. It seems like I prefer the iPhone display. And then I don't remember what I did. I think I did prefer the iPhone a little bit more there also in the browser because white looked a little bit better. And that's just a personal opinion over there. And also you know loading videos, it seems like it was a lot quicker with the iPhone. Uh, so kind of interesting there. So let's go ahead now and continue. And let's go ahead and take a look at some quick gaming because gaming, I think that's something that a lot of people is interested in. So we're gonna go ahead and load up a very big game on both these two devices and see how it performs. So we're gonna go ahead and load up Modern Combat 4 on both these two devices. Here we go, because both have amazing GPUs. You should also be able to disable these virtual buttons down here at the side on the on the um, what is it being called uh, on the on the Nexus 4, and that's something that should be very good. I'm probably gonna make a video about it uh, because that's extremely good when you want to uh, you know when you play some games if you accidentally click on the virtual keys, that's not very fun. So I uh, might do a video about that if I you know find how how to do it, but it shouldn't be that hard. Uh, let's see here, the game looks kind of the same on both these two devices, there we go. And um, I'm probably going to go ahead and start off here, let's see here which one loads up quicker. I need to start to play to get this game on one device. And also I can see here, it seems like the graphics looks way better here on the iPhone and the colors looks better here on the iPhone, um, probably because it has higher graphics. Let's go ahead and skip the intro on both these two devices. Again, the colors looks a lot better here on the iPhone, as we can see here. Let's go ahead and start to play a little bit here. on the uh, Nexus 4. I'm not sure if it's the game it has to do anything with the game, but of course, in terms of the performance, uh, the GPU Adreno 320 here on the Nexus 4 performs extremely good. And it's extremely nice with this bigger display than on the iPhone. You want the big display when you're playing games like this. Run around and kill people. There we go. Let's see here. There we go. Now let's go ahead and try it out a little bit here on the iPhone. And I gotta say, it seems like the details are a lot more clear here on the iPhone. It looks like it has higher graphics. 
And again, the, the kind of same uh, performance in GPU runs really good. Could be a little bit higher FPS though here on the iPhone. It really, really feels good here on the iPhone. You know, extremely, extremely smooth and everything. And the little display could also be a little bit nice here because I, I really can have a nice grip here on the on the phone, and I really feel that I'm 100% control about what's going on. And actually feels probably a little bit easier here to play, at least when you start off. Uh, you may get used to that bigger 4.7 inch display, but I really like this game here on this device. It really feels easy, uh, you know, compared to the Nexus 4, and that the graphics probably is a little bit higher here on the iPhone. I'm probably going to be called a fanboy or something like that, but it really feels good here. There we go. So, some quick gameplay here. Uh, for me personally, it seems like the winner is the iPhone in gaming over there because, you know, it has like a more nice uh, display there and the graphics seems to be a little bit higher and the the SGX, uh, the PowerVR SGX543 MP3, the triple core GPU that's well by the iPhone really kills in gaming. Uh, it, it would be interesting to see Apple produce like a bigger iPhone, but I would, I would love to see an iPhone that is like uh, around 4.7 inch big or 4.8 inch or maybe even 5 inch big and see how that one performs. Uh, but it really feels, you know, it feels good on both devices, of course. But the thing that you can grip this device extremely easy and, you know, along that it feels like the graphics was like retina optimized and that it, the, the FPS felt that, like it was a little bit higher, just made it that I'm, I'm pretty sure that I would pick the iPhone there as a winner. Now, if we go ahead and continue, let's go ahead and check out some Kindle reading here pretty quick. So, uh, if you go ahead and find it, there we go. So, we're loading up some text here, which should be, you know, very, very crystal clear on both these two devices. Let's go ahead and make the text a little better. And the Kindle app kind of lags a little bit here on my Nexus 4, I'm not quite sure why. But if you go ahead and go down maybe to the smallest text, And a little bit annoying here on the Nexus 4 that has a tap on this little button down here at the corner to bring up the menu. Well, it's a lot easier on the iPhone, I just tap on the screen. There we go. So the text is ultra small right now. So we can go ahead and take a look here at the displays. Now, personally, me myself, I want to see them very, very close first so I can see. So what I can see here when I'm looking at these two displays is that it seems like first of all black is a little bit more black here on the iPhone 5 display compared to the Nexus 4 display so a little bit better colors there also white looks a little bit more white here on the iPhone display compared to the Nexus 4 display uh, also in terms of crispiness you know I think it looks better here on the iPhone uh, you know but it showed it's like 10 more pixels per inch uh, very very good on both though, but the iPhone is a little bit better here. Both the black is a little bit more black, white is a little bit better black, white, you know. So, uh, kind of interesting there to do that kind of quick. I'm probably not going to do a, um, uh, what is it being called? Um, I'm probably not going to do a benchmark test of this video because it's kind of hard because I'm running on iOS. And you know, they, they don't have like a similar app on both these two devices. Probably, maybe they have like... Geekbench or something, but I don't think Geekbench is that kind of good. I like to see real life performance, and in real life performance, when you you know go through menus and stuff like that, you won't really see a difference here. But you know, it all comes down to you know, do you like you know, do you like bigger stuff, you know, and do like or you do you like widgets? Do you like the freedom that you can just connect your Android device to a computer and then you just, you know put on S, you know, you, that you can just go ahead and download apps and put them on. Uh, of course, this you know it must be legal apps, but uh, that you can go ahead and copy and paste music to the uh, uh, to your card used on your Nexus 4, and then you just use it. You don't have to use iTunes like you know you a little bit locked down there uh, with Apple. But uh, if we now go ahead and check out some quick voice search here as well, uh, so of course we do have the stock version of Android here because this is a Nexus device. That means that we don't have any like voice search assistant that we can talk to other than the new Google Now. 
Uh, so we're gonna use Google Now here on Android, and then we're gonna use, go ahead and use Siri here. Uh, so we can go ahead and uh, set an alarm. Set alarm for 6 p.m. Okay. So it's that's how you do it with the voice assistant here, Siri, on an iPhone. While on Google Now, you can basically do the same. Set alarm for 6 p.m. Oops. What? Set alarm for 6 p.m. Okay, <laughs> this is not gonna work right now because I, I've turned on the language uh, to my native language, uh, Swedish. Uh, but if I would have English here, it would basically work, then it would set an alarm there. And I can also say other things to Google now, I can say like define Bill Gates, who is he and uh, but Siri is a little bit more personal, I'm not gonna lie, you know, you can chit chat with it a little bit and it feels a little bit more personal uh, and, and you know, Apple really succeeded with doing a voice assistant that, you know, feels a little bit better just like that. Let's go ahead and load up the, um, the app store on both these two devices, see how quick it loads up. I think it was a little bit the same there because I accidentally missed clicked on something. Let's go ahead and see if we can go ahead and download like Angry Birds. You can see that Apple optimized the UI here a little bit better uh, than the Google Play and then Google Play. When you search for something, you can see that immediately uh, Apple switched the thing that most people would download. Uh, and then you swipe here while in Google Play you still you, you just have a list down here uh, so you know it kind of works the same here when we go ahead and download something what 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 so a quick look here at these two smartphones uh, you know I'm gonna go ahead and check out the camera also maybe a little bit quick so which one of these cameras are good as you see right now when I fire up the uh, the iPhone camera and go ahead and take a picture here you can see that we have a burst mode and the options are you know very very simple Apple likes to keep it simple you know we'll have grid and HDR and then of course we can turn off flash and then switch to camera mode uh, but uh, you know very very simplistic there uh, to go ahead now and do the same here uh, on my little uh, my little Nexus 4. You can see definitely the first off the DUI is a little bit better looking, uh, but in terms of you know crispiness and stuff like that in, in pictures, it seems like the iPhone here definitely is better at um, uh, producing better quality pictures. And then of course the UI here, the visual UI is better here on in Android because you just hold in, and then you have tell them different settings immediately that you can go ahead and customize so we have different modes here that we can quickly customize just by holding a finger down on the screen pretty pretty nice and uh, taking burst mode is not as quick though that is a little bit boring you know and uh, then if we quickly let's see here no let's see here and then of course you can also tap here but it seems like the winner here in uh, in the camera area definitely is the iPhone. Uh, so, um, I mean like overall I would say that the iPhone performs extremely good uh, compared to the Nexus 4. But then you should also know that the price should be a lot, you know, the Nexus 4 should be a lot cheaper. Uh, then if you like the Android world more, I mean like that's one of the big things. Like if you prefer our iOS then, you know, this one performs extremely good still, you know, the iPhone 5 compared to the Nexus 4, but it all depends. Let's go ahead and check out another game, maybe. Let's see if we can go ahead and check out like Asphalt 7. You can see it loads up quicker here, also this game on the iPhone 5. Got a new update there. Let's go ahead and do a quick play. It takes a lot, lot uh, longer here to load up this game on Android.
No. Let's go ahead and see which one's quicker here. And again, it is the iPhone that's quicker. Again, it's way, way, way quicker here on the iPhone. So if you go ahead and start off by playing this game here on the iPhone, extremely, extremely nice FPS here. It's kind of crazy how good it feels. The, the triple core GPU uh, in the iPhone is so badass. I mean like, the performance is amazing, it looks amazing, it is dope, it's dopest of the dopes. I don't wanna, I don't wanna stop playing it, and that the iPhone is so small, it's so easy to play, it's so nice. Now, let's go ahead and try it out on the Nexus device. And wow, the, the FPS is lower. It's probably like 10 FPS lower or something. So if the iPhone is rocking at 35 FPS or something like that, this, this one feels a little bit like 22, 23 FPS. I mean, it's still very good, but not as good as on the iPhone. But then of course you have the gorgeous big display here. Uh, and both looks very, very similar here in, in this kind of game. Both look very, very good. Uh, I mean that the, the, the displays on both these two devices are very very similar and in games you don't really think about it too much you know but the FPS not as high here uh, definitely on the Nexus 4 but as I said still good so quick little gaming look here as well on another game let's go ahead and exit out of this there we go exit out very very quick though also something I definitely want to say about these two devices they they exit out of things extremely quick, and that's something that I definitely do appreciate. So, quick little look here. We haven't looked uh, that much about uh, at the notification area because it's so boring here on the iPhone. Me personally, of course, it's way better here. More customization here on the Nexus 4. Uh, you know that you can have these quick widgets uh, to customize brightness and you know Netgear or you know <laughs> your network and you know your battery and things like that. So um, I do hope you have enjoyed this video. If you did like it, please leave a like down below. Which one is the winner for you? Uh, please tell me that in the comment section down below. And also if you want to go ahead and check out one of these devices, then I will have links to that in the description down below. Yeah, have an awesome day.